Hey everybody, welcome to today's game plan. My name is Gareth Soloway from Verified Investing and InTheMoneyStocks.com and I'm here to bring you guys your Wednesday alpha, meaning that we are going to talk charts, we're going to talk CPI data, we're going to talk trade setups that are actionable for today, both in crypto as well as stocks and commodities, because holy cow, we got a CPI number today that was epic in terms of the market reaction. Now, ultimately, if you look at the CPI data, it came in slightly better than expected. I think the biggest thing today, if we flip over to my screen here, what we can see is U.S. consumer price inflation cooled to its lowest annual rate in two years in April. Now, if we look at the data, right, headline inflation cools to 4.9%, core inflation ticks down to 5.5%. Now, the market had expected basically a five handle on the consumer inflation number, right, the CPI data. The fact that it came in at 4.9, it puts that psychological 4% number in front. That is why you're seeing the equity markets rally across the board, and we're also seeing gold pop, Bitcoin pop, stocks like I just mentioned are all getting a bid, and the dollar is diving. All right, now again, why is the dollar dropping when there's less inflation? I love this, this aspect of people not quite understanding. I want to be clear on this. So again, think about this. Inflation's coming down, which means less money in the system, but the dollar's also dropping. Why is that happening? The bottom line is it's dropping because the lower inflation goes, the more likely the market is factoring in that the Federal Reserve can print more money later on. Because inflation is low, they can print more later when we get in a recession, which again, folks, I've said this to you guys, I'm going to say it again. I am put going on record saying that by the end of this year, we will be in a recession. I think it's fourth quarter, but again, it's coming. All right. The bottom line is let's get into some charts. So we talked about the CPI data here, guys. I want to show you quickly the Dixie, the DXY on my screen. Take a look at the intraday chart. Look at this collapse in the dollar. That is an amazing drop right there. So again, the dollar on the back of this CPI data, which was better than expected, meaning lower inflation, took a nosedive here and down we go. Now, if we look at the chart, this is not a surprise, right? We look at a chart of the dollar and we can clearly see that we were hovering below a wedge pattern. All right, now a wedge pattern is basically consolidation, meaning that we stayed within this high and these lows and we went sideways, sideways with chop. We then broke lower. Now, if we go and zoom into this period right here, what we can see, and this is very cool, guys. Notice how we closed below on the DXY right here and we never confirmed. What happens? The dollar rallies up. Then we come down again, we close below and confirm. The confirmation signal is something that I teach in my winning trader series, and it is game changing. It tells you when it's a real breakdown versus a fake out. The first one is clearly a fake out. The second one is real. What does the real breakdown mean? It means that when it travels back to that trend line, it's going to get rejected eight out of 10 times. That's 80% success rate. It's going to get rejected. It gets rejected. And then look at the drop we're starting here. Based on this chart, we likely will see a breakdown. And I want to put another trend line on the chart right here. So take a look right here. Put this trend line here. Look at where we're coming down to. Notice pivot low, pivot low. We kind of kissed over here. This is your support level at 100.82 on the DXY. I expect within a few weeks that will be broken and we will see this going lower. That's going to be bullish for gold. It's going to be bullish for metals overall. Whether or not it will be bullish for the stock market is another story. Eventually, a dropping dollar will not be bullish for the markets. Right now it is. Take a look at the SPY. Let's flip to the SPY, which is the S&P 500. Take a look at the run here. This is your pre-market data on the SPY, a monster surge to the upside. Now, just a reminder, Every week for the last couple weeks, I've just started these game plans on Wednesday, folks. The previous week, two weeks ago, I gave you a huge trading opportunity on a short on Bitcoin that I took in here. And now last week, I gave you a great trade level on Estee Lauder, symbol EL, and that was huge alpha. So my goal here is to literally give you guys tradable information and we're going to get to charts. I'm going to give you levels in this video, in this game plan that you can trade today in the markets. All right, so what am I doing here? 
So I'm just going to be flat out with you guys. I started to fade this S&P rally. I began to inch in a little bit on the short side on the S&P right above this 414 level. I'm expecting a pullback. Now, this is not necessarily a swing trade. This is more of a day trade. But again, even holding it as a swing, I would not be upset at these levels in the S&P 500. I continue to be bearish overall. S&P, NASDAQ. I think the NASDAQ is the most bloated. In fact, check this stat out. The NASDAQ relative to the S&P is the most overbought. The last time it saw these levels was in the 1999 to 2000 range, meaning that you go back to the dot-com bubble, and that's the last time there was this disparity between stocks in the S&P and the NASDAQ. So if we go to the NASDAQ, it's rallying as well today. I continue to look to fade this. If we flip over to the daily chart, we can see again here on the daily chart, we're trading just above this line. I have a key target on the QQQ over the next few days, 329 and then a double top at 333. I will look to swing trade at those levels, look to add to shorts on the NASDAQ here as well. Another one of my favorites, guys, and I've talked to you guys this about this one before, is NVIDIA. NVIDIA to me is a no-brainer on the short side here. And if we look here at the chart and I drag this trend line out, this is the line you're looking to see break. Look at this underbelly here right around 272. There's a very clear trend line. So as long as NVIDIA stays above that, it could see 300, the even number. There's a technical draw to it. But ultimately, when it breaks this yellow trend line to the downside, that's when you get a bigger move to the downside with a target probably of around 230 to 229 on NVIDIA. All right, so again, we're just going over some data here. I want to show gold really quickly. I'm sure everyone's interested in gold's move. You guys know I continue to be a long-term bull in gold. Gold shot up this morning. It is starting to pull back just a little bit. Now, again, what could be the cause if the dollar's at the lows? Why is gold popping, number one, while well, the dollar pulled back? So we know it trades inverse. But why is it pulling back here when you still see the S&P at the highs? And the answer is very simple. The, the gold trade is also a fear trade. And right now, there is less fear in the markets today at this point following the CPI data than there was yesterday or even before the CPI data. So again, while gold will ultimately go higher, I continue to be a huge bull. You'll see weird disparities on this where gold maybe doesn't get as big of a move when the stock market's also rallying when the dollar's falling. All right. So let's flip right over to the daily chart here on gold again this is a very clear wedge pattern breakout i still think you could see a pullback to the low 1900s over the next month or so on gold but ultimately folks this is going to break out i continue to be an epically big bull on gold and again the double top is now a triple top we just hit that since my last game plan last week we hit the triple top there you see it pivot high to pivot high to pivot high and again that looks to be a level i think by by third quarter of 2023 here. So within a month or two uh, or a couple months, I do think gold breaks out. $2,300 price target is what I have on it into year end. Quickly looking at silver. Let's see what silver is doing here pre-market. As we scan through, same thing on silver popped. It's getting a little bit of a pullback right now. Again, for me, I continue to be a bull on silver as well, but I will just make it clear that the silver side is also industrial, meaning that there's a lot of use cases in economics or in the economy for silver. That means it is slightly vulnerable to a recession. So yes, it's a store of safety, and I do hold, hold silver and gold as a store of safety, but I also am aware that silver has that industrial side, which means that in a big recession, you might see a little added pressure versus gold uh, on the upside. All right, let's take a look at oil real quick. I want to see what oil's doing this morning here, folks. Oil did rally up. We've seen oil, and again, this is really an epic chart here. So if we look at oil, it had this beautiful dump. It has bounced back a little bit here as well. I'm looking at a level on oil for a potential beginning short position at 74.50 to 75. You might go as high as 77, but my guess is this is the beginning of a bigger breakdown pattern. I know a lot of people out there are talking about, oh, oil stocks are the place to be. I'm not seeing it. In fact, if we go over to ExxonMobil's chart, I wanna show you guys a trend line that I'm watching very carefully on the side of Exxon. Take a look at this one right here. So if this line breaks on Exxon, see this? And it's kind of a head and shoulders almost. Not quite a head and shoulders, but nonetheless, there's a, there's a little pivot point, bigger pivot, and then right there. If this line breaks on Exxon, 103.50, 
look for a bigger dump, likely down to about $84. So that tells me, again, if Exxon's going to be falling, if it breaks that line. Now, maybe it doesn't break that line. If it breaks that line, look for it to dump significantly. That tells me oil's going lower. I think by 2024, oil is below $50 a barrel, folks. And again, what that means is we're in a recession that is probably a global recession with the Fed unlikely to print us out because, again, inflation, yes, it's coming down. But again, think about it like this. The way I view inflation is that if you're overweight, you know, if I'm just, let's say I haven't worked out in a year and I've gained some weight. The first few pounds that I lose, easy, right? You know, I go to the gym a little, start moving around, that, that weight just comes right off. It's that last little bit, that from 4% down to 3 down to 2 that last little bit to get your chiseled six-pack that is so freaking hard to do. I think we can all relate to that in some way, in some form. And again, I think that's a good analysis of what inflation is going to be like. So yes, easy. It came down from 9%, 9.5%. Now we're in the high fours, 4.9% per today. But again, as we get lower, it's going to be harder to bring it down. Remember, we had a two-fold thing. Printing of money sent inflation higher, but also there was a supply chain issue. The supply chain is being resolved. That has been resolved. That brings it down. You don't have the printing of money yet. The, that aspect has not fully been worked out of the system. That, again, is what's going to be hard to get us from 4% down to 2%. So what I would expect going forward is actually this is probably one of the better CPIs we'll get over the next few months. I think it's going to get a little bit harder. Okay, so let's go into back to the charts, guys. I have a big level on Twilio I want to unveil to you guys. So Twilio is taking a beating today. This is your pre-market chart. Look at the drop after earnings. So yesterday after the bell, Twilio collapsed to the downside. It's currently trading at 45.70. All right, if we go to the daily chart here, look at where this is. So there's a, there's a high risk level I'm going to give you guys. Now, high risk levels, let me explain what a high risk level is. A high risk level is a level that has the probabilities of success are lower because it's high risk. So yes, is it better than 50%? Yes. But again, for me, it's a level that I either don't take or I do a very small position at. And again, this is important because the management of position size is the most important thing for a trader. A trader can be the best psychologically disciplined, the mentality can be there. If they put way too much money in a trade, they're gonna get emotional. We're human beings, We're, that's, that's our nature. So the way you control emotion, you get strong disciplined wise, but you also control your share size. So. The level here is right at this $45 level. There's a gap fill right there. 45 even number, high risk level, but that is a level we're very close to that now. The next level, and this is a safer level, and by the way, there's no such thing as absolute safe in trading. I want to be clear on that, right? Everything comes with risks. But for me, I'm going to start looking at a, at a little bit of a better risk reward, lower negative probability point of this line here at $43.45. And then this is really the big one down here, $41.40. Now let's talk about trading. So how would I trade this? Well, let's just say I don't take the 45 even number. All right, so we'll pass on that. The way I would trade this is this. Number one, before I even think about getting into trade, and by the way, this is getting into stuff that I teach in the Winning Trader series about position sizing and how to keep your mentality strong and how to keep focused and be disciplined and really ultimately um, you know, perform to your maximum abilities, is you before you even get into trade, you say, how much money am I willing to commit to this trade? And you have to look at the risk. All right, Twilio's getting crushed right now. So there's a lot of risk. I mean, this could go down another five, 10 bucks on me. So you have to say, okay, what's my full position size? Okay, for me, I'm willing to commit $100,000. Well, I don't put 100,000 in on my first buy. What you do is you leg in, you dollar cost average in. And so maybe I would do 25,000 at the first level. And then if it gets in the middle point, maybe another 25. Then at the low here, another 25 on the chart. And then ultimately what I'm doing is I'm legging in, which brings my average down. This chart ultimately will get a bounce. It's a good quality company. And when it does get a bounce, because I've legged in, I have a better average and ultimately I can make money. It's called trading, being able to give yourself the ability to trade around positions. All right, one of the worst things you can do as an investor or a trader is to get in a position and then not be able to trade around it. And you're just handcuffed. You're handcuffed. You're like, dang it, I put all my money in and it's moving all around. It's going against me. I can't buy anymore. I can't do anything else like that. That is a no-no. 
what you do is you leave yourself maneuverability. Now, is there a chance that I would buy my first position? It bounces and I make money? Yeah, awesome. Okay, so I didn't buy any more. I didn't have my full position. Who cares? Easy money being handed to you. Don't be an idiot. Don't be an idiot and just say, oh, oh, I darn it, I, I didn't. No, you just made, it made easy money, no stress. Someone basically just handed you a bunch of money. Say thank you, don't look a gift horse in the mouth like they always say, right? So that's the key. And if it goes against you, be able to maneuver. One of the key lessons I've learned, and this is something I practice to this very day and has helped me be basically an 80% or better success rate trader, is always go into a trade thinking you could be wrong on your entry. What do newbies do? Newbies, retail crowd, they go into a trade and they say, oh, I'm going to make a million dollars on this trade, so I'm going to put all my money in. What happens? Yeah, maybe once they make a lot of money, worst thing could happen because then they get crushed on the next one and they lose it all. I go in and this is, think about this mentality. I'm a pro. I've done this for 20 years, okay? And I still go into trades thinking that I might be wrong. That is the winning mentality. It's such a weird thing to think of all my experience and all the trades. You know, at this point, hundreds of thousands of trades in my career, hundreds and hundreds of thousands. But I still go in and I think I might be wrong on this trade. It protects me. And protection of capital is how you build mega wealth. Remember that, guys. That is so important. All right. Next up, let's go to Airbnb. Back to the charts we go. Airbnb getting crushed on earnings as well. There is a high risk level that I'm seeing oh, just a little bit below here. Uh, it is at 104. Actually, it's not that bad of a level. I would rate it as a mid-level. So a mid-level rating means there is some risk to it, but it's not as crazy. The 104.50 level, there's a gap fill right there at 104.50. There's a secondary really good level also right in here at 101.50. And then look at this, right at the even number, boom. Pierce of $100, and by the way, even numbers in trading, whether it's crypto or not, are amazingly important. So what we have here is my first edition, if it flushes into 104.50, I buy a little bit. If it flushes down a little bit lower, I add, and if it gets down to the even number of 100, that's where I add. I keep my stop, I figure out where my max loss is down here. I probably, for me, would not want it to get below 95, but ultimately, right in this vicinity, I would expect some sort of bounce. There you go, guys, there's some alpha there. Now, let's get to Bitcoin and crypto. I know, oh, so many Many people are wondering here what is going on with cryptocurrencies. So we did see a pop on the CPI data, but you know what candle formation this is right here? Look at this. All right. And I know those of you that I've trained and I've trained a lot of people in my career, the winning trader series continues to train people every single day. All right. But again, this move up right here, that's a topping tail. That is a top signal on Bitcoin intraday. Now, would I short it? No, because it's already pulled back, right? So you're already down from 28,330. You're already down to 21, 000, uh, 28,100 now. So I'm not going to chase that short, but just for a technical bias, that is now a topping tail. A topping tail is a reversal signal in a chart that when it appears, it tells me, okay, guys, that might be a short-term top on the intraday. The way it's negated, if it closes above that, then it starts being that the chart can go higher. But until that, that's actually a bearish sign on the charts. All right, so now if we go to the daily chart, the only thing I'm seeing on the daily chart is that we're still stuck in a range here. All right, so the range again is the range that I've talked about in all of my interviews, guys. It is a range between 30,500. This is a level that I literally gave months ago that I thought it could get to as my max upside. And then if we zoom in, it's a $27,000 handle right down here. All right, so that's your range right there, 27,000 to 30,500. Now, the reason you have a range, by the way, in a chart is so that you know when it breaks one way or the other. So again, if it breaks 30,500, guess what? It's probably going to 33 to 34,000. If it breaks 27,000 to the downside, now you're talking to 24 to 25,000. And that's really what we want to do. Let's quickly take a look at ETH here, see what we got on ETH. Uh, ETH is holding this underbelly trend line right here. That's still holding support, but if that breaks, you're headed down to about 1,700 on ETH. So again, these are different charts. And by the way, whatever happened to that altcoin season that everyone was talking about, sure, you got the meme coins to run, all that crap. But honestly, look at this chart of Matic. I mean, is this an ugly chart or what? But you know what? Every ugly chart, there's a buy level for me. Just like every crazy surge chart, there's a short level. I want to be clear on this. 
I am neither a bull nor a bear. I have my macro opinions, but when it comes to trading and making money, I buy support and I sell or short resistance. That mentality, never fall in love with a stock, never fall in love with a crypto. So many people do, and then you know what? They're buying Dogecoin at 40 cents. Where is it now? They're buying Tesla when it was at its highs. Where is it now? Don't fall in love with a stock or crypto because I'll tell you one thing, it's not gonna love you back. And I mean that literally, it literally can't love you back. So make sure that you're trading based on the factors here, okay? The factors in the chart, the factors that are telling you what to do. The last thing I'll say, guys, this, this game plan, I, I am here sponsored by Bybit. They're running an amazing competition. We're doing it with, with, with banter. And again, just $250 in an account and you can compete to get your best percentage. The best percentage is I think with a Tesla or 40,000. Second place is like a Rolex. And again, the link is below in this stream. So again, I would encourage you, I mean, listen, it's a fun thing. You know, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it real investing. It's, it's more gambling, but you know what? Give me 250 bucks and maybe I can win a Tesla and compete with a thousand other, 10,000 other traders, I'm in. So by the way, Bit, uh, Bybit, thank you for sponsoring this stream. I bid you all farewell. Thank you guys for coming out. I will keep you posted. Watch the levels I just gave. Let's make some money. Have a good one, guys.